What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going over the almighty Thor Crusader build into season 27 for Diablo 3. Let's get into it. Now I know that for all you Seder mains out there, that Crusaders really didn't get the best of love uh, between season 26 to season 27. We thought there was going to be a lot of buffs. We thought there was going to be this crazy new thing that was going to you know, jump the power skill for Crusaders, but it really didn't happen. But what Blizzard did was make some really cool builds. There's the Condemned uh, build that's really out there. It's pretty strong. And then there's this one, the Almighty Thor God of Thunder build that I really like. We did do a test of this and we crushed it in the PTR, guys, but I'm bringing it to you today. So as you know, like we always do, we're going to go do a GR90 to showcase the build, and then we are going to go over everything that you're going to need to rock this through Season 27. Let's do it. All right, guys. So how the build works is pretty easy. We're going to be steed charging around. We're going to pop Iron Skin to stay alive, pop Laws of Valor for reduced uh, cost, and then Argrat's Champion to just be an absolute monster. And all you're going to do is just fly around, hit your... What is this? Your justice burst every five seconds to proc our focus and restraint. And then you're just riding around and you're gonna be dropping blessed hammers everywhere, okay? Now this build is not the tankiest build in the world, guys, so make sure that you guys keep your distance because we are rocking a Zaya's Stone of Vengeance, which is fantastic for this build. But as you can see, you light everything up. What does Loki say? Oh, you scared of a little, little thunder, Loki, and lightning? And he's like, oh, I'm not really fond of what comes after. Well, guess what comes after? That's you on horseback, raining down from the sky, okay? This build is very, very fun. Very flavorful, guys. <laughs> very, very cool. Very pleasing to the eye. And actually just, like, really easy to use. Now, I do have to know, guys, that this, this build is not going to push, like, high... High GRs, I think on the leaderboards it only rocks a, like in the 130s at best, which still isn't bad for the Crusader. I mean, it sucks they don't have a single build that can, uh, you know, hit 150s, but that's okay. This build is super fun. It's actually one of my favorites since returning to Diablo. It's just so cool, man. I'm not a big Crusader guy, but this build is absolutely fantastic. We're rocking a GR90 right now in like absolutely crushing it and you can see that our steed charge gets reset so often that we're able to just fly around the map i don't even know where those other uh timers went and you can see that the auto casting condemns pop up they don't look like the ones that i'm manually casting like they did in the ptr but that's okay that is all right we're going to destroy this Rift Guardian like it's nothing. Cut through him like butter. All right, guys. We just crushed that GR90. Crush the GR90. I'll see you back in town to go over the gear. All right, guys. Back in town. Let's see how fast we crush this, okay? GR90 in two minutes. That's what you want out of GR90 out of your speed builds, and that's exactly what this is. So let's go over the gear and everything that you're going to need. So... You are going to need the Aegis of Valor set. We're going to rock five pieces in this set so we get the entire bonus. Now, everything is going to be coming from rocking our Fist of Heavens at the six piece because our Fist of Heavens and Heaven's Fury increases by 20k, which is really nice. But the cool thing with this is, is when you're attacking with Fist of Heavens, you get a stack of increased damage and then hitting with Fist of Heavens returns Wrath, which is great and reduces damage taken. So... Even though it may seem like you're a tank, you're not. The build is not the most tankiest out of what the Crusader could play. So just keep that in mind, okay? You want to keep your distance. All right, now pairing with this, we're going to go with Captain Crimson's guys for just cooldown and more damage. Uh, this build, you know, even with the re re like reduced cost reduction on Fist of Heavens, we still want to be able to have maximum potential out of this. So we rock Captain Crimson for just more damage reduction and damage, okay? So I paired this with Bracers of Fury. The Bracers is actually a really slot that you could just, you know, you could change this to Nemesis Bracers if you're not rocking a follower. You could change this to 
uh, you know, what is it, Nordic's Brace, where it gives you knockback, anything like that. Uh, you have a lot of flexibility here in the Bracers, so feel free to play around with that. I'm rocking Bracers of Fury just in case if I want to rock Heavens of Fury on top of this build, but I'm not, but I just like this. It hits all of our categories that we need. Uh, also pairing with this, guys, we got Focus and Restraint along with Squirt's Necklace for double damage and then Focus and Restraint for even more damage, which is fantastic. Now, in our weapon and offhand, we, you have to do Nordit's Favor for this build. You just have to, okay? You could probably use a different option, but Nordit's Favor is what's going to allow you to Steed Charge everywhere, okay? It increases the duration of Steed Charge by two seconds, and then when you kill stuff, it reduces the cooldown of Steed Charge by a second, which was what you saw is just constantly Steed Charging everywhere so you can get all over the map, okay? But not only that, this is the biggest thing. While you're Steed Charging, when you stop the Steed Charge and you're casting a Fist, uh, or fist of the Heavens, you get 200% increased damage while using it in five seconds after it ends. So when you stop, you drop Fist of Heavens, 200% increased damage, insane. For the legendary gems that we have for the build, guys, we got Zaya's Stone of Vengeance in here for more damage at the greater different distances, which is another reason why you got to keep your distance. You don't want to be too close because you get real squishy. Then we also have Gogog of Swiftness just for more attack speed and dodge percentage to help us stay alive and give us that sweet, sweet cooldown reduction that we need to help try to stay at Akras Champion at permanent uptime. And then, of course, we have Molten Gizzard Wildebeest in here uh, for just a lot of armor and a shield. Now, you do have some options here, guys, with the gems you could put in Bane of the Trapped or Bane of the Stricken if you're struggling with Rift Guardians. But you saw us destroy that one, so I don't think you need it. But if you want more damage reduction, I would just say swap out Gizzards for Bane of the Trapped. But I rock Gizzards because this build is very squishy and when you're up close, and I just want to stay alive for a lot longer. So those are legendary gems for the build. So that's the gear, guys. In the cube, dark light, you have to have this. It allows it to cast twice and deal a thousand more damage. That's insane. Uh, Kazit's Court of Righteousness for 40% less wrath costs and deals 100% more damage. Amazing. Ring of Royal Grandeur for all of the pairs that we have here. Into the skills. We are rocking Justice Burst. Now, in, in the skill for Justice Burst, you could rock any one of these if you really wanted to. Uh, you know, Holy Bull, Hammer of Pursuit that seeks, crack, you know, Sword of Justice, whatever you wanted. You could probably use anything that you really want here. But because we're not as tanky and we're more ranged, I like Justice. So it's just we can, you know, throw things out. We also need something so that we're able to proc our focus and restraint. Okay. So we got that. Of course, Fist is the Heaven Fissure to do amazing, crazy damage. Steed Charge Nightmare, you have some option here, guys. If you want to rock, draw, and quarter just to drag them with the chains, feel free. I like the fire one just to add more damage overall when we're running away. Next, we got Iron Skin Steel Skin. Just gives us a damage reduction for 7 seconds. Law of Valor Unstoppable Force, guys. This is going to reduce our cost of all Wrath skills by 50%, which also helps trigger Captain Kremsitz to give us even more damage reduction and damage. And then, of course, Akarat's Champion Profit for more armor so that way we can stay alive. We want we want this build to be very cooldown dependent because we want to try to stay in Akarat's Champion almost nonstop. I don't think it's, it's going to be very hard to get 100% uptime on this. But if you can get it as close as you can, do it. So that way you're always in this to help you stay alive. Because the build is very, very squishy if you get up close. you got to make sure you maintain your range. Uh, in the passives, we got Heavenly Strength, because of course, why not? Uh, and then we have Finery for more uh, strength for every gem socketed, and then Long and Arm to increase the, the effect of Laws of Valor by five more seconds. Now, Lord Commander reduces the cooldown of Steed Charge by 25%. The damage with the Phalanx and Bombardment don't apply here, but I kept Lord Commander because I still want to be Steed Charging absolutely everywhere. Now, if you wanted to, you can swap this. This is your one flex passive on your build. You could do Indestructible for an extra life. Um, you could do Hold Your Ground if you don't want to dodge. Uh, you could do, um, what is it? There's one more that would actually be pretty solid. Um, what is it? Holy Cause, potentially. But the Lord Commander slot is the one that you're going to have the most flexibility in. I like this because we are a speed GR build. I'm also going to be using this in the T16 build, guys. So that's the passives. 
and your skills. Now let's get into the skill stat priorities for the build. Going on the helmet, you're gonna want strength, crit chance, and fist of heaven damage. The shoulders, you want strength, vitality, all resist cooldown. The gloves, you want strength, crit, crit, cooldown. The uh, armor, you want strength, vit, all resist. For the belt, you want strength, vit, life, and then all resist. We don't want armor, guys, we want all resist. I just don't happen to have the roll. The pants, you want strength, vit, all resist. Same thing with the boots, guys. You want strength, vit, all resist, and then fist of heaven, damage increase. In the squirts necklace, we want a uh, crit, crit, lightning damage because we are lightning based. I just have this one. I need to get a lot better one. So you want crit damage, crit chance, and then lightning damage. In the bracers, lightning damage, strength, vit, crit chance. The Both of the rings are going to be the exact same. You want crit hit, uh, damage, and chance. And then in my two strength slots, guys, we want cooldown on both. These are the last two cooldown spots that I don't have, okay? These two. As far as our weapons, we got... Uh, this can be any elemental damage, but you want it to be basic damage. Basic damage or try to get lightning damage. Uh, and then strength, cooldown, and the vitality needs to be percent damage increase. On the shield, you got strength, crit chance, fist of heaven damage, and then you want to change the area damage that I have here for cooldown reduction. Those are going to be the stat priorities for the build, guys. So, that concludes the almighty Thor Lightning build for the Crusader in Season 27, guys. This build is absolutely a blast. It's a lot, a lot of fun. Um, it's very easy to play and just kind of gear. It's not too hard. It's an amazing build. I think if you're playing Crusader this year, or this year, this season, definitely play this build for GR90, just for speed farming. And then your uh, T16 builds. The T16 build is slightly different. We have some items here, but we'll go into another build for that later. But definitely play this. It's an amazing build. I absolutely love the, the Crusader um, Almighty Thor build. And it's very pleasing to the eye, guys. So it's really cool. I mean, at least the Crusader has something. All right? Don't be hating too much on the Crusader. But if you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to drop a like, as always. If you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe. Uh, all the support really does help. You guys have been just blasting. Blasting the support as I've been blasting the content for you guys. So thank you so much again. And as always, guys, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.